Hey guys, what's going on? Chris from Flying Lat Media. Happy New Year, hope the holidays treated everybody well, and we couldn't be more excited about 2020 and the opportunity to create more content for our clients and our channel. If you've seen the channel before and the videos that we make, you know that we focus primarily on racing and motorsports, and a large part of telling those stories is including onboard video. We collaborate with teams and drivers to get copies of their footage to incorporate in the end deliverable that we hand off to the client. Unfortunately, more often than not, when we go to get the footage, we realize that the settings they had on their cameras were all wrong, which means there's likely epic moments that we can't include with our video because it just doesn't match up frame-wise or resolution-wise from the other content that we've produced. So we wanted to make a quick tutorial video to talk about the top things that you can do today to get the best footage from your GoPro 7 or your GoPro 8. Now, if you don't have either of these cameras, that's okay too. The things that we're going to change in the settings, you can do on your camera as well. You may just need to find that particular option in the menu for the version of the camera that you have. Out of the box, the GoPro 8 comes pre-installed with some default picture profiles. Simply using any one of these will get you a pretty solid image. However, for the best results, we always recommend creating your own profile. To do that, simply hit the icon in the middle of the screen at the bottom and select the plus from the very end. For now, we're not gonna concern ourselves with the numbers. We'll just go ahead and save the profile, leaving the word custom to indicate which one we'll be using on the camera. Once we save that, we'll go to our GoPro application on our smartphone and control the camera that way. You can see by virtue of the application that it notifies us we're using the custom profile we just created on the camera. From here, we'll click into the edit feature and actually change the values to our liking. First, and perhaps the most important, is the video resolution. And simply put, the resolution is exactly how wide and how tall the video file is. Why this is important is selecting a resolution that's appropriate gives us the maximum flexibility in post-production. Files that are too small don't give us the maximum amount of latitude to rotate and position the clips accordingly, whereas widescreen 2.7K or 4K files give us the most editing capability and the ability to rotate or crop accordingly. At a very minimum, we recommend a resolution of 2.7K or ideally 4K. The determining factor for this will be the size of your memory card and how big a file that you want to work with. Frames per second is also a very critical selection to make. At the very minimum, we would recommend a frames per second of 30 and ideally 60. As a rule of thumb, the more frames per second, the more clear the video footage will be. However, if you select 120 frames, it's going to create a slow motion effect, which we don't want. For the field of view or what they call the lens setting, we prefer the traditional wide look. However, if you want to experiment with SuperView, that is GoPro's proprietary method to show an even greater field of view. However, there is a little distortion that occurs. HyperSmooth is something new to the GoPro that was introduced in the GoPro 7 and is enhanced in the GoPro 8. This is perhaps one of the major calling cards of the camera and one of the reasons that it's so popular amongst action sports. We recommend running the setting to the absolute highest you can in either high or boost. For bitrate, we always recommend high. However, going back to the resolution, the determining factor here will be the size of the file that you create on your memory card and the size of file that you want to work with on your computer. As a rule of thumb, the more information, the better quality the image. Moving down to EV comp, which is short for exposure value compensation, because most motorsports occur in bright sunny conditions, we always like to dial back the exposure value just a hair. We recommend going negative 0.5 or even negative one. For ISO min and max, we'll leave the minimum at the default 100 and we'll set a ceiling for the ISO max to be 800. We want to make sure that in the rare event that there is low light, that the ISO doesn't artificially go too high, thereby creating a noisy image. Virtually everything else we leave exactly the same in the default profile. And with these settings, we feel that we have a pretty good baseline to begin recording. And here's an unscripted bonus tip. No matter how good the settings are on your GoPro camera, a dirty lens will give you dirty footage. Be sure to keep your camera clean. 
And with that, we'll end the video. Hopefully it gave you a bit more insight as to the settings that we use on our GoPro cameras. Like anything, taste is subjective and mileage will of course vary. So if you have settings that you've found that work pretty well, please let us know in the comments below. We always love to learn new things too. And if you liked a little bit more of the tutorial or the how-to type of video, please also let us know. It's something that we're experimenting with for 2020. And not just being another channel doing unboxing videos with fairy lights and affiliate links. Our hope is to show a bit more of how the sausage is actually made. Real gear and real paid gigs with real challenges. So if something like that is of interest, please let us know. And with that, I will say goodbye and I'll see you at the next turn.